Hey everyone, Nicole Stackline, technical agronomist for DeKalvin Asgro in Eastern Iowa. And you probably didn't ever realize I was this short because I'm always just talking to myself. <laughs> but with me, I have Dave Draker, who is the CBA customer business advisor over here in Eastern Iowa. And I really respect him. I ask him a lot of questions, <laughs> especially on the herbicide front. Um, but you also have a lot of experience in breeding and corn production all over the place. Little jack of all trades here, you know. Love it, love it. So, um, been noticing that uh, corn was growing really fast there for a while. It kind of changed overnight and now it's kind of slowing down and I've been noticing some flashing in the corn. Stuff just looks kind of ugly. What's going on with that? Well, you hit it on the nose. I mean, stuff slowed down, right? So the metabolism slows down and I've been getting a ton of questions today and yesterday on to spray or not to spray on this stuff. I've been telling them to hold off because we need two things. We need the corn to be able to chew up the product fast and get out of the system, but also we need the weed to be actively growing so it takes it in. So usually the rule of thumb is after you get nighttime temps below 48, you wait 72 hours, which guys don't like to do that because they run to the gun, right? Yep. But really we're out there to protect the crop and to kill weeds. So in twofold, if you're spraying something that doesn't have any safeners in it, you're probably gonna see some flash until that corn plant is healthily growing and, and can chew through that stuff quick and get it out of its system. Another thing is, is you want the weed to actually take it in so that it does the job it's made to do. Perfect, so what exactly does a safener do and how does it do it? Well, there's different types of safeners, right? You know, we, we have a CSI safener in our products, Corvus Balance, Lotus, Comprino, Diflex. Mainly what it does is it allows the plant to chew it up quicker and spit it out so it doesn't stay, stay in the system and do any detrimental effect. Like with HPPDs, a lot of times you may see some flashing or some phyto, it helps eliminate that. Now I'm not gonna say under these conditions, even with the safener, you might not see some of it, mm -hmm. but it will lessen the effect considerably. Okay, how about what does soil type take in con consideration? Because on our farm, we just got done spraying and we sprayed last week when it was still warm, right? Um, but the inside tissue, you know, the inside of the whorl is just now growing into it and it's really white. Um, we had sprayed some HPPD out there and especially in our sand, oh my, it looks really bad. Well, sand, you know, you look at like different types of sponges, right? Mm -hmm. Sand has got big pores, you know, holes in it, a big spongy type thing. So when we get water and stuff, it makes stuff really available. So that plant, when you sprayed it, was actively growing, took it all in because it was so mobile in the sand. Now we put the brakes on. Now we have clouds. <laughs> you know, we have two things that doesn't allow it to chew through it as quick. So it's kind of a, a intermediate effect of getting it out of the plant. Okay. All right. Because I've noticed other things too, is that it's the time of year when we start seeing patterns showing up. So a lot of things that I've been seeing lately, um, kind of interesting is the last couple of years, cool wet planting conditions, you could always start seeing the, you know, the, the tractor tracks in the field and that's what was growing slower and was less green. This year, I'm seeing where like the tractor tracks were, the stuff is greener, faster growing because when the tractors went over it, it took out the fluff. We had better seed to soil contact in those areas. Also, as this corn is getting about V3, V4, and it's growing fast, it's using more nutrients, but we don't have a lot of nodal, gro nodal root growth yet. If you were only using anhydrous, those anhydrous streaks are showing up as well. Exactly. I mean, the corn goes through an ugly corn stage, right? When it transitions from its seedling or seminal roots to its main nodal root systems. And if we get cool, wet, where that mesocotyl is shrunk down or affected, it can stall it out even longer. So it always kind of stalls till we actually get root hairs on the nodal roots so it can start absorbing nutrients and water. Yes, because like I'm digging stuff up right now and it's V3 and we've got those nodal roots started but there's no root hairs right. and that's really what does the job. Exactly, yep. exactly. Um, anything else that I'm looking at right now, uh, we are right now in kind of that derecho area, we're just outside of Marion, um, seeing a lot of fields in those derecho areas that went ahead and went to corn or soybeans this year and it's gonna be really hard to get all of that volunteer corn killed because there's a lot of it, it's gonna keep going. So I just want you guys to be thinking about, um, especially if it was second year corn, when it got blown over in derecho, um, we probably had some levels of rootworm in that last year, and they're gonna be there feeding on basically this cover crop of corn this year. 
So just kind of hoping that guys are going to go out, do some root digs on this volunteer corn so that we can either plan when it goes back to corn in 2022, planning on traits if we need to, soy applied insecticide next year, or even going in this summer and hitting it with insecticide for some adult control. Correct. All right. Anything that you're seeing on the soybeans? Uh, you know, soybeans, kind of the same thing. Of course, you know, with the tap root, it gets through this stuff a little bit quicker than the corn does. But they're, everything's slow growing now. Like you said, Nicole, there's a lot of volunteer corn out there. It's probably going to take two shots to kill it. I mean, trying to kill a clump of volunteer corn and get enough of the AI in every one of those worlds is probably not going to happen. So it's probably going to be a two-shot deal on volunteer corn. Okay. Any other tips on volunteer corn control? Uh, make sure you got some oil with it. Um, you've got to you've got to have oil with it to make that stuff work, to make it penetrate. And also, there is some potential antagonism with some of the other post products. So most people are adding one or two more ounces to your normal rate of your volunteer corn killer to offset that antagonism. All right, that sounds great. I think that's all we've got for now. As always, call, text, or email with questions. Thank you.